Hey, thanks everybody for joining us today, Live Music Nation Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Gill. Today, we're with Jennifer Souza from the Midsummer Arts Fair. She is the coordinator there. Jennifer, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Jennifer, give us a little background on you. Where did you grow up and talk a little bit about your career? Well, I grew up in Quincy, Illinois, actually, the community I am living in. Um, I've been here a long time, (laughs) it feels like, Mm -hmm. and um, my career has kind of been all over the place. I've worked in higher ed, and I've done a lot of community relations and event-based stuff, and then I've also now transitioned into ESOPs. So currently, I work on employee stock ownership plans for companies that have their own trusts where the pretty much the employees own portions of the company. So the better the company does, the better the employee does. Awesome. Okay. So tell us about this arts fair. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it smell like in case you have food vendors? Give us the breakdown. (laughs) Uh, Midsummer Arts Fair is probably almost about 18 to 20 years old. It was started initially as a community event um, built by artists who just wanted another outlet for to showcase their work and sell their work within our region. And that has grown into a larger, more national based event. Um, We even are a little international because we do get an artist from Belgium. We've got some artists from Florida. Um, So we've kind of continued to grow that. And we have usually around 54 to Mm. anywhere to 54 to 70 artists who attend our event to sell their high end products to the local region with what they make and different types of backgrounds from watercolor to oil to ceramics to 3D to fiber to um, all the different types of art. And within that, we also celebrate a lot of our local musicians, let alone bring in different groups to perform. So we have on Friday night, we have a big Blues in the District um, festival that we combine with. And Blues has been going on in Quincy for quite a while. They bring in rather large uh, Blues Names bands every other Friday throughout the summer. It's, it's, it's huge. We draw on a lot of people from St. Louis and everything considering where we are within uh, the economic region. And so we usually have a top name performer that night. So it's really good blues with all kinds of food vendors with popcorn and corn dogs and funnel cakes and all those wonderful, like almost fair smells that you get along with like the good barbecue smells that are going on. And then we've just got the flow of the music. People are allowed to carry in their own alcohol that night or we have alcohol sales on site. So people bring in their lawn chairs and they relax, they bring in their blankets and they hang out as families. We got some kids activities going on. Last year we did a big glow in the dark thing for the kids. So they were carrying around blinking balloons and face painted and um, it was a lot of fun. And we transitioned that into Saturday where we have different uh, kind of venue and guests in our gazebo. Um, So we're in a pretty large park. It's got a nice like cemented old style gazebo that we put all the performers in throughout Saturday and Sunday. And they do individual acoustic acts to um, different types of poetry and stuff too. It's a wide array. Um, We have a Native American drum group that comes in that it's kind of a drum circle. Anybody can kind of join in. Um, and we're hoping to bring a Hispanic act in this Saturday. And that flows into Saturday night where we turn it over into our street concert. And our street concert is where we block off our main street on 5th, between 5th and 6th. And we bring in our portable park district kind of stage. <laughs> and then we usually have maybe a local opening act and we bring in another big name kind of performer on that stage to perform that night and that goes on till 11 and there's alcohol and barbecue and everything going on within that area too and then we transition back into Sunday where we have even more acts in the gazebo so it's a weekend long event of hanging out relaxing and praying that the weather cooperates yeah no oh, <laughs> oh. well you're making me hungry number one so that's <laughs> up there um Jennifer how long have you been the coordinator here uh, for Midsummer Arts Fair, I started on the board a while back because it's a volunteer-based organization, and then I just came back on, and I'm serving my, I just got done serving my fourth year as president, So, um, or sixth. I'm, it's my sixth year on the board, third year end of president. <laughs> so all, all the volunteer work, all the dedication, mm-hmm. all the time, all the energy, 
Um, why? Why? Why do this? Because uh, it brings awesome things into your community and things to expand people's horizons and understanding and just branches people out in your community, which is great and brings in all types of individuals and it's just a great community event. It's what's, great to see the kids experience it. What's the reward for you? Um, well, I get to buy really great art and I get to enjoy some really great entertainment. Uh, but the probably the biggest reward is just seeing your community enjoy things that they wouldn't otherwise get to enjoy. That makes sense. To the, to the youngster out there um, who isn't sure what they want to do with their life, but they're listening to this podcast and they're thinking, huh, she's got a pretty cool job. What, what do you say to the youngster out there who maybe wants to event plan and run the show one day? What's a good way for them to get started? You know, event planning is something that you just kind of got to dive in and the more you do it the more you learn how to pivot so that's probably the biggest tip I can give somebody is there's never actually something that prevents you from doing something there's just a roadblock you got to work your way around so a lot of times when you get into stuff you're dealing with permits and other stuff that you just are like oh my god they want how many signatures on this and I have to have an evacuation plan and where am I going to put but there's so many people in your community that are doing the same type of events. Don't reinvent the wheel. Utilize the expertise that's around you and they will help you. That is the one big thing in event planning. We're all here to help each other. <laughs> that's awesome. No, yeah. that's fantastic. Jennifer, I always ask these two questions at every interview because I am in live entertainment and live music. What is, question number one, what is the best concert you've seen in your entire life? Oh my gosh, I have to go with Aerosmith. It was amazing. And uh, one of my personal favorites. <laughs> yeah, go along with that. Okay, dead or alive, you could bring one musical act to the Midsummer Arts Fair. Who you bring in? Oh, man, that is really tough. I would love to bring in uh, some Dave Matthews or something. Something that's old school that would kind of appeal to like cross that generational Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. We got a lot of rock people here. Yep. I think Kiss could be highly entertaining and brings in an artistic element. Just throwing it out. Yep, you, could, <laughs> you could. You could. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jennifer, how do people find out more about the Midsummer Arts Fair? Uh, we have our website up and running and they just relaunched it. It's midsummerartsfair.org. And um, we'll continue to constantly update information and musical acts and uh, performers as we kind of secure everything. We kind of put it in there. We've also, of course, got a social media pages. We've got Facebook, we got Instagram. So you can find us on there as well. Perfect. Jennifer Sousa, thanks for being on with us. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me. Well, baby, I'm on with a ball.